What's up y'all? We out here at the garage today to check out a really nice new weapon light. Now I'm going to approach this one a little bit different than I usually do. Instead of just hopping out to the backyard and showing y'all a few distances, I'm going to put this one through its paces out there at the range and give y'all some of the important info. And we're also going to compare it to another well-known brand. So let's get this show on the road and show you what we got. So what we got here is the new PL Turbo Valkyrie, their newest addition to their weapon light lineup. Really, really nice stuff. I'm a big fan of all of their lights and we're going to talk about some changes that they made that I think might get a whole lot more people on board but as far as this one goes this is one of their non-rechargeable models it takes the uh, standard 123 batteries these are not proprietary to Olight any standard 123 123 a battery will go in here you can see nice sealed battery case with the um, release button right there really really nice and sealed up now as you can see the form factor here is more along the lines for a full-size tool it's got their nice new uh, adjustable mount system here it comes with the lug for 1913 or glock rail system you know you push it in like that then you well i just turned it on ahead of time push it in like that and you can adjust your forward back which a lot of lights do not have including the one we're going to compare this to and then you lock it back down and you got a nice thumb screw here with the slot on it to tighten it down so let's talk about the specs right quick and what makes this different from the other valkyrie models this is an 800 lumen it's just a single power 800 lumen 66,003. 300 candela so really really nice light here brightness wise it actually has a spot and a flood built into one you know most of the times or a lot of times you kind of have to choose whether you want a really nice flood or a really tight beam that projects out far this has got both of those impact resistant tempered glass on it it's got a 515 meter throw what they claim now all of them claim really big throws but y'all know how that goes ipx uh, ipx6 rated one meter drop so on and so forth the runtime on this they're saying two hours total on it as far as the operation again it's a single intensity but it actually does have a, a strobe mode also both either side buttons work you can see already inside but you'll really get a nice feel for this when we go out that super nice tight beam there and a really nice flood and i've got full fluorescent lighting going on in here so uh, it does have momentary of course press and release or click on for uh, always on same with the other side if you want the strobe boom Boom, there you go and simple operation really really nice simple basic operation so obviously that really nice combo of the tight beam with a far throw and that nice flood is what sets this apart from the other Valkyrie models now I'll talk about the sale right quick and then I'll do a little comparison here they've got this sale starting tonight the 18th so September 18th at 8 p.m. this thing is going on sale for $62.99 I believe it is 63 bucks for this thing that's an incredible deal I'm I'm telling you right now it's worth every single penny because uh even at regular price it's 89 bucks worth every single penny of that and to top this off they have just announced that nearly all of their lights now come with a lifetime guarantee y'all including this one that is an incredible value when i show you the comparison you're getting ready to see you can you really cannot pass that up for 62.99 now one thing i will say again is this is set up like i say it's mainly for full-size tools as you can see here now i say that but this is that uh, taurus g3 i just picked it up obviously it just clamps right on as far as uh putting it on as i showed y'all but you can see it there on that g3 perfect placement and that's on the middle notch so i can adjust it uh, out further if i want to but fits perfect on this size and then of course on something like this canic tp9 sfx it's an even better fit absolutely perfect fit on that the smaller stuff however like the mc9 here it's a no-go on the real small ones like this or something i like like to do as y'all can see is mounted on ARs this is uh, not that one this is the Valkyrie turbo but this just happens to be the exact same size their turbo model this is the LEP one that they have that has only the really tight beam but I like them here because as you can see you don't need a pressure switch with your grip there boom you're right on it I mean you're right on the controls so again a sale on these starting tonight May 18th at 8 p.m. Eastern I'm telling y'all right now I'll put a link down below it is well worth the cost for these things so now let's do a really quick side by side as far as features before I take y'all out to the range so this thing is basically geared directly towards a competition to this surefire x300 this is an incredibly expensive light I personally would never have bought this thing not in a million years and now after doing this comparison not in a million years would I buy this thing these things go for right at 300 bucks y'all you can get them on sale a little bit cheaper but they're over 200 bucks period they're most of them are 300 
300 or a little bit over. 300 bucks for this weapon light right here, y'all. Absolutely no way would I pay that now after what I'm getting ready to show y'all. So as far as form factor here, very similar size. The length on the PL Turbo is actually a little bit shorter, which is definitely not a bad thing. The diameter on the lenses there, the PL Turbo actually looks to be slightly larger. So again, not a bad thing there. As far as the other dimensions, they're virtually identical. Without putting some calipers on it, I couldn't tell you 100%, but the rest of them look nearly identical. Now I did get this X300 with the B style mounting system. It, they've got an A and a B. A has more of their just a straight flush kind of thing where it's not really as quick and easy to change out. Man, I wanted it to be really similar to this. So very similar mounting system with the B style. You twist it out, but there's no spring loaded like there is on this and there's no forward back movement. It is where it is right there. That's just what you got. Now you can swap out the lug here. They do put the lugs for the 1913 and the Glock like the uh, PL Turbo does. Now, as far as the controls, there is a big difference here. And in my opinion, the PL Turbo blows it out of the water. Not even close, not even close in my opinion. As y'all saw with this PL Turbo, very nice tactile rubbery coated buttons on both sides. Really nice, easy to press or very, very easy to hold. And that would be with your finger over here that you would might most likely be manipulating it with or your support thumb maybe. Very, very nice, easy to get two buttons, easy to manipulate. This Surefire on the other hand, this is terrible, I think. In my opinion, this is absolutely terrible. And let me tell you something, I paid for this thing out of my pocket just to do this comparison. These controls are absolutely horrendous to me. I cannot believe that when you, when you feel them, when you actually manipulate them, they feel cheap as I don't even know. I mean, they feel totally cheap, totally, totally cheap, y'all. I'm not exaggerating. It's not a push in like that. It's a push up. It's a push up and there's detents and it fit and they're not even positive detents like they lock in sometimes when you go to push it down it'll over rotate sometimes and come on so you can go up or down on either side and like I say it's in the detents but then when you're up here it's incredibly difficult to manipulate that off with just your finger without flipping it all the way down I mean y'all saw it without even being on the tool when it's on there it's incredibly difficult to manipulate I could not believe that's how that was when I picked this up now that's how you do the always on the momentary on is just as bad if you ask me these are hard plastic buttons the momentary on is not pushing in on it it's pushing forward on it it's pushing forward on that with the tip of your finger or the the tip of your support thumb over here if you had it mounted that's incredibly not only is that incredibly uncomfortable to the tip of your finger it's a very hard little button right there and you have to mash it and you're constantly wanting to relieve pressure because it's digging into your finger right there. So again, in my opinion, it's not even close. It is not even close. I would never buy this. It's not like this one's a little better. I would never buy this. I would never in my life buy this other than for a video like this. After, Especially after having an experience with it, never would I pay money for this. But anyway, let's move along and I'll talk about the specs. I knew I was going to get long-winded ranting about this just because of the huge, incredibly unwarranted price difference. But specs, again on these, nearly identical. This one, this one claims a little bit less lumen wise this one claims 650 lumens the x300 that is 800 on the uh, pl turbo uh the candela 66,000 on the uh, x300 66,300 on the pl turbo now one place it does have it as far as rating at least and you know whether that translates to real world i don't know this is ipx7 where the olight is ipx6 without spending a whole lot of time going into detail on that rating system the six and the seven is what matters as far as the waterproofing x is the dust proofing so neither one of them have been e even rated for dust proofing the the number is what matters in the water six is going to be rated for a strong blast of water of 100 liters per minute for three minutes straight seven is going to be submersion up to a meter for 30 minutes in my opinion once y'all see the blast that i gave this thing I, I would have no problem saying that this would probably pass that ipx7 easily other than that they both do feature that nice Nice dual beam pattern with the wide flood and the far reaching tight beam. Now this one doesn't have strobe, so if strobe matters to you, that's another mark against this one. But again, it's really similar as far as the beam there inside. It's not going to matter much, but you can probably already tell there's going to be differences. And once we get out to the real world, you'll be able to tell. So enough of this chit chatting at the bench. As you can see, this one is already dented and dinged up because, I, like I said, I put this thing through some paces, and as you can see, it's still holding up. Same battery 
very same everything. Not a single problem with this. So let's roll on out to the range, put it through a few paces and do some uh, dark testing. All right, y'all, we're gonna start this party out by getting wet out here. So this thing is IPX6 rated. So IPX6 means it can withstand a strong blast of water for three minutes of 100 liters a minute. So a 100 liter a minute blast for three minutes. And I'll show y'all here, it is still functioning no problem at all. We'll put her about right here where you can see good. I'll flip it over and all that good stuff while we're doing it too. So three minutes is what this is supposed to last. So that's what we're gonna do to start it off here. We'll start the timer here. I don't know if y'all can even see the timer. Uh, I'd say that's a blast. Can you see the timer? I think y'all can see it. So I'm blasting it, blasting it. I mean, three minutes is a long doggone time. Let me spin it over and get the other side. All right, so there's our three minutes of a heavy blast. So that right there is what IPX6 means. It's rated for three minutes at 100 liters a minute of a heavy blast. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is toss it around, drop it, probably run over it a little bit. And I got a box full of stuff I'll show y'all here in a second to rough it up with. Now it's rated for, I think it's one meter impact. So, you know, I mean, that's, that's nothing really. So one meter is stuff like this. I mean, just basically picking it up over and over and dropping it like that, you know, on the dirt. So you, you see, we got dirt, rocks. Y'all can see it's still working, I'm sure. Over here are some rocks. I'll pick you, pick the camera up before I drop it there. So I'm not. Not really sure like how many times uh, it's drop rated like you're supposed to be able to drop it from a meter but i mean as you can see i'm dropping the heck out of it so you know we'll even toss it up a little bit higher that's about that's about six meters right there see what's what's happened so far so far still working strobe working yep no problem at all so we'll keep tossing it a little bit so this is i mean technically like this is the the meter drop tested i mean that that's what it's rated for so you know it, it the ipx6 blasting it with the water it, it held fine with that you know i'm dropping it at a meter on rocks and dirt and hard dirt here so i mean it's passing that now i'm not going to take this thing to the breaking point today because i've actually as soon as it gets dark i'm going to do a little demo out here comparing it with that uh, x300 out here on my range so y'all can see out to 100 and all so i don't want to take it to the breaking point it's still working right now so hopefully it stays working where i can at least test it long enough i, I feel pretty confident in this thing honestly probably covering up my mic doing that it's getting scuffed Get some little scuffs on it. You probably ain't gonna be able to see real good. Getting some little scuffs around the bezel. I don't see really any scratches on the lens itself. All the controls still look good. The door is still nice and tight. So we'll toss it around a little bit more here. Throw it around a little bit. Step on it here. I'm stepping on it here. Let's step on it here. I'm about 210 pounds. So we'll step on it a little bit, jump on it a little bit. I actually evidently pressed the button with my with my shoes so y'all can see it now it's working still working no problem at all after stepping on it throwing it around we'll throw it around a little bit more uh, i do have some rocks over here i really don't want to bust the lens on it but hopefully it'll hold up okay let me see if i can get y'all off this tripod better yet i'll just leave you on the tripod and we'll drop it here on these rocks so i mean as y'all can see that ain't no soft dirt that ain't no grass i mean this thing's taking a whooping and it's still still ticking so far as far as physical damage i mean it's got some little scuffs and scrapes but obviously that's to be expected give it a few more rocks here i've got something else to do with some rocks too to get it give it a good test also all right so technically it's already passed what it claims to do it's done the ipx6 with the blasting it's done the drop testing but what i got here now i've got a box of just rocks i've got picked up a handful of little big little small medium sized rocks here got some old brass i just picked up a handful of dirt and rocks and junk off the range i'm gonna talk it in here and we're gonna throw it around a little bit we'll tape this thing up and i'll just throw this box around let these rocks and stuff bang the heck out of it so got them in there that's our 
we'll kick it around, toss it around, throw it some, play a little, play a little soccer with it. I'm probably, I keep catching myself touching this, uh, touching this microphone. Y'all probably hearing a bunch of who knows what, but as you can see, it's just a box. We all saw it. Rocks, uh, brass, whatever. I mean, this right here is more, I mean, this is accelerated wear to the point where you would never put this kind of wear on this, really. I mean, I, I don't see it happening. So this is, this is really unrealistic. Like I said, as far as I'm concerned, it, it did what it claimed already. So I wouldn't be surprised if something or some one of this takes this thing out for sure. I mean, that's a, I mean, look and look at that. That's six, eight meters, who knows? But we'll toss it around a little bit more open it up see if it still works so let's go and pop it open see what we got here got a mess is what we got it's dirty and it's not even dust rated at all so this might take it out the x means it wasn't dust rated uh oh oh had it say i thought it stuck a little bit there it is, I think it is sticking a little bit there. Let's see if I can rinse it off. Let's rinse it off. I got a bucket of water right here. Rinse it on off. See if that'll clean it out. All right, we're back in action, y'all. You can see there on strobe off. Um, I thought I had finished it off right there with that. It actually got some little gravels and dirt and stuff stuck up under these little pressure buttons. So it was messing with it, wanting to cut it on and off. So other than that, it's still functioning. Now you can see it's all banged up here. I don't know how well y'all can tell. It's got some nicks in the aluminum. Right here is a pretty good size nick. But surprisingly, I know this camera's not gonna focus good enough, but the glass is still really, really nice and shiny and smooth. No scratches, no gouges, or anything on the glass. All right, y'all, I'm gonna stop right there for now on roughing it up. As you can see, still running, no problem at all. Still mounts up, no problem. I've got it on this G3 tar. So once it gets dark, I'm gonna give y'all a little demo of how bright it is versus that X300. But for now, I just wanna show y'all where I'm gonna be when it gets dark here. I'm gonna leave the camera and all right where it's at. So right here, obviously, that one right there is my 10 yarder. These two rounds, those are about, 15 yards including the one miss i made and then the yellow one that's 25 yards and green no green is 50 anyway so once it gets dark like i say i'm gonna come out here and hit these same ones and show y'all how bright it is all right y'all it finally got dark enough out here so i can show you a little comparison here this little glow from the left over here and behind me of what you're seeing is just some little solar lights so right here i've got it mounted on the taurus g3 the o light so right there again that's my 10 yard there's a 15 there's a 15 there's a 25 there's the green 50 the pink 75 and then the orange 100 so incredibly nice bright beam and a really big flood i mean i don't know how well the gopro's capturing that entire flood area but that is huge if i go out over here i don't know if y'all can see but that's all the way out to like 120 130 yards there i mean this thing's got a super nice throw on it so if i darken back down this right here as you can see that's the uh, x300 i'm getting ready to show that's probably too bright but anyway i'm sure y'all know here's the x300 so as you can see on it 10 yards 15 25 7, uh, 50 75 100 so x300 and there's your o-light i don't know about y'all but there is as far as brightness and throw and beam pattern i mean you're looking nearly identical now this is olight this is the uh, x300 the surefire so what i can tell you is this olight's got a little bit warmer of a color this uh, right here this uh, x300 is definitely a more of a bluish white bright kind of uh, light this is a more warm from the olight so again there's your surefire there's your O-Light. So neither one of them drown each other out. So you can see neither one of them is above and beyond. I mean, that's lighting up that 100 really nice. So if I come in with the Surefire, you can see it doesn't drown out the beam there. So if I do it with the Surefire here, it'll do the same thing. I've got the Surefire now. If I come with the O-Light, 
I mean, it doesn't drown it out, but that O light's really putting out some light. And I'm getting ate up by a mosquito here or something. So there you see it. Really, really nice, bright. To me, I mean, there's very little discernible difference as far as the beam and throw. I mean, arguably, the O light might have it be a little bit there, but now color, there is a little bit of a difference. So let me send a few rounds using the O light here. This is uh, just 10 FMJ, and then I've actually got five of those uh, streak fluorescent tracers. We'll see if we can get them to do anything. So I didn't even show you the strobe either. So there's your strobe. But we'll go back to on here. Let's see if we can hit something in the dark here. If I turn my dot on, that'll help things. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can get that 15. There we go. See if I can get to 25. Trying to, I tell you what, I've, I'm really not used to dots. And it's really, I really suffer on my quick follow-ups with it right now. I don't know that I ever will get used to it. So that was 10 there. Just giving y'all a picture. I can see really good with it. No kind of nothing obscuring my vision. Let's see if we can see these, uh, these streak rounds here. Y'all have to tell me or I'll have to see on video. Actually, I think I did see something, maybe. Hard to say. Whew, that's tough with that dot jumping out here in the dark, but as you can see, that's what it looks like running some rounds with the O-Light. So there you go, y'all. You tell me which one of these was the clear winner as far as the beam testing in the dark. You know, the more I get looking at the editing, I was trying to be as impartial as possible. But in my opinion, looking back at that nighttime footage, this, this PL Turbo takes the edge slightly. I really do think it takes the, the slight edge. I could see this one washing out this X300 after I was looking back doing during the editing. I really do this, think this thing took the edge and that you could get four of these, basically. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Basically, you could get four of these, almost four of these for the price of this. And after what this thing went through and is still ticking perfectly fine, yeah, it's worth every penny. So I'm gonna end it right there, y'all. Make up your mind for yourself based on what you saw right here. There was no smoke and mirrors going on here. No funny business. I showed y'all every second that I could without making this video an hour long. So the proof is in the pudding here. Lifetime guarantee on these things now. I think this is an absolutely incredible light, especially at that price. So again, check out that sale. I'll leave some links down below. They've got a ton more really nice new stuff too. They're actually coming out with a line of holsters that fit this. So obviously anything that the, would work with that X300 Turbo will work with this. Line of new holsters, tons of new patterns on their lights, some new lights. Uh, Y'all know another one of my favorites that I always push because I love this thing. I carry this one every day. It's getting dinged up in my pocket. Are these arc fails? This one's the UV. This one's got the laser pointer so you can get the pointers or with the UV light there i cannot say enough good about these things so check those out if you're looking for a good edc light so again affiliate links down in the description i appreciate the heck out of all my range gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting the channel i've got some really really good stuff headed y'all's way so be on the lookout and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon